thing that caught our eye is that Qualcomm uh, just shared its perspective on the state of the 5G uh, market in a recent blog. Mm -hmm. Specifically, uh, they're calling out for 5G to stand alone. And in other words, that's a high noon scenario for 5G. And that would uh, certainly be welcomed when it comes to 5G standalone implementations. And as a little background, um, to enable and energize the initial 5G standards uh, that started with 3GPP release 15, now that was implemented for 5G standalone starting in 2017. And as a result, across the mobile ecosystem, 5G non-standalone was implemented in the first wave of 5G deployments that we uh, witnessed. Now, the 5G NSA architecture, non-standalone, allows a, a new 5G radio access network uh, to augment existing 4G core and RAN capabilities. And uh, since NSA, or non-standalone, didn't require a 5G core network uh, to be deployed, mobile operators were able to accelerate uh, their uh, 5G timelines and bring, for example, 5G enhanced mobile broadband experiences to their customers sooner as a result. Today, 5G non-standalone is globally adopted and it's delivering enhanced smartphone experiences as we've seen. However, many of the key innovations in 5G require 5G standalone to literally be standing alone as the network architecture that is developed and designed to allow new differentiated services that could be more readily monetized for new revenue service as one example, but basically you know, for innovation across the board. And so Clint, from your perspective, how do you see 5G standalone making a difference in advancing the 5G market and moving you know, the 5G ecosystem forward and basically getting away from the hype uh, the excess hype that we've witnessed over the last uh, few years with 5G standalone and getting us more uh, focused on real world practical applications and services. Uh, what's your view? Well, I mean, I, I thought the uh, I thought the Qualcomm news and the, the report, the key findings were, were spot on. And I mean, it really does seem like there are some key areas for 5G standalone can be a, a terrific uh, difference maker, um, mainly those that focus around delivering low latency experiences. So a few examples, uh, scaling delay sensitive applications like extended reality, uh, including virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality and the like, and essentially the, the building blocks of the metaverse uh, that's right around the corner, um, which can expand some of the availability of cloud gaming and similar applications for consumers. And then on the enterprise and industrial side of things, so enterprise and industrial applications, um, things like digital twins, just to just to name a few things. And then you know also you know as I know you know Ron, uh, there's a huge growth in independent private wireless networks that use network slicing, wireless Ethernet programmability to meet some really demanding use cases. And these private networks are really picking up momentum and a lot of market acceptance right now. Yeah, that's spot on, Clint. And I also see as another, I think, uh, prime example is wide area IoT uh, gaining ecosystem traction, particularly as uh, capabilities such as new radio light reduced capabilities uh, that enable device streamlining uh, for improved uh, cost efficiency. And that uh, is referred to in shorthand as REDCap. And so from my perspective, this can aid you know, the 5G private network adoption, as well as introduce new, new momentum for this adoption when REDCap becomes more readily available. And the good news here is that 3GPP release 17 basically uh, solidified that standard, that part of the standard, and it can start paving the way for standardized implementations across 5G networks towards the end of 2024. So definitely uh, REDCap capabilities will play a major role in making 5G standalone more successful and more commercially available. And as a additional background, specifically as of Q1 of this year, over 83% of all announced 5G devices supported 5G standalone. Hmm. However, but only 22% of the 524 operators out there that have already invested in 5G networks are also investing in 5G standalone. And as such, 
we're seeing the need for more operators to implement 5G standalone to further incentivize, for example, the developer community to prioritize 5G application development in areas such as a digital twin technologies and other areas that we already touched on, uh, for example, more advanced cloud uh, gaming capabilities and so forth. So this, is, I think, is a tremendous upside that we're really, we're only at the front end of the 5G journey as a result, even though we've already gone through this hype cycle that isn't unique to 5G. We've seen it with other technologies such as voice over IP and metaverse uh, that you touched on and many other technologies. But what we're now getting is a level set, the ability to see that 5G is really just at the front end of the capabilities that it can deliver. And a lot of it's gonna depend on 5G standalone being implemented by more operators. And you know, for additional context, uh, when the operators saw that release 15 came out, that allowed you know basically for the foundation of a 5G standalone architecture, that is uh, enabling 5G core capabilities to actually line up, be aligned fully with 5G new radio capabilities and uh, overall RAN capabilities. And uh, so we're still seeing uh, the operators relying heavily on their previous implementation of LTE 4G core, but it's really with the 5G core implementations that we'll see, I think, many of these breakthroughs. And that, I think, started coming with a release 16, which basically addressed the needs of specific verticals, such as in the industrial area, as well as enterprises and uh, very exciting automotive use cases. But also what was important about release 16 is that it introduced precise positioning. And so this, I think, will be integral to how 5G use cases can really take off in, for example, the enterprise and industrial realms. But also uh, with now release 17 uh, becoming more uh, mature, again, those red cap capabilities are going to enable the uh, ecosystem out there to take advantage of those 5G IoT use cases that I think will uh, be difference makers in terms of, for example, the monetization mm -hmm. that we talked about, but also certainly those extended reality use cases that are all basically predicated on 5G standalone being implemented. And so I think on that note, we can wrap up the fact that yeah, the 5G ma market really is uh, headed toward a lot more potential. And we didn't even touch on 5G advanced in <laughs> this conversation. <laughs> so, I, mean, I have to say, I mean, it's just, you know, it's fascinating to, to see, you know, what a long runway we have with the, you know, proliferation and growth of some of these key 5G applications. I mean, uh, you know, a lot for the operators left to enable, as, as you're mentioning. And then, you know, when we think about long tail applications, we typically think about, you know, kind of niche markets and things like that. But some of these are really substantial opportunities.